When you think royalty, does holding gold bars come to mind? Sitting in an old chair? Using a royal spoon? Well, this is totally normal behavior for the king's coronation. So what rules did King Chucky have to follow exactly? God save the king! God save the king! Okay, we're starting strong out the gate here because one of the major plot points of King Charles's coronation includes a spoon. We know it's a slow news day when a spoon is a topic of discussion. And boy, was it. But yes, there is significance to this royal spoon since it's the oldest item in the Crown Jewels collection. Apparently, it made its royal ceremony debut in the 12th century. During the coronation ceremony, the spoon holds holy oil, which is used to anoint the monarch, as has been done for every king or queen at their respective coronations. Would it have been cooler to use a full-out diamond to sip the oil? Sure, but the monarchy is clearly practical. And yes, I love tradition over here, but I think when we start making a spoon a big deal, maybe we need to take a giant step back and realize that it's the year 2023 and coronations are hilarious. I mean, a showcase of the bourgeoisie funded by taxpayers? A laugh riot. So it may not be his wedding day, but King Charlie was able to strut his stuff down the aisle. Yes, like one does when they're a bridesmaid. Charles strode up the aisle of Westminster Abbey, which is fun, we guess. And while he wasn't wearing a dress designed by Alexander McQueen or Givenchy, he was dressed up all fancy-like in a very old robe. And since Charles was down that aisle, he had to take his coronation oath, which was the only part of the ceremony required by law. The wording of this oath has constantly evolved to reflect changes to the territorial composition of the UK and the wider Commonwealth. Ironically, the oath did not reiterate that the entire world is in an economic depression. Truly a Game of Thrones. The King of the North! King Charles waited a lot of years for the right to finally sit in King Edward's chair. The chair was made in 1300 and has been used by every sovereign since the 1600s. Simply, no other chair will do. I'm starting to think that when you're king, all you have to do is sit in a chair and hold stuff but I'm sure there are other duties. Maybe being heinous to Meghan Markle is one? It was reported that, traditionally speaking, Charles was to wear a simple white gown. But forget this, the boy went vintage. King Charles broke with tradition by wearing vintage, sustainable robes for his coronation. While monarchs have historically worn brand new robes for their coronations, Charles wore a 200-year-old robe, previously worn by past rulers. Multiple previously used items were chosen for the coronation in the interests of sustainability and efficiency. I truly never thought I'd hear the words king and sustainable in one description, but here we are. So we've talked robe, now let's talk headwear, y'all. Charles had to wear a cap of maintenance until he was crowned, which is basically a fancy fabric hat. Then once that crown was on it, it was game time, and Chucky had to hold an orb and scepter. And while this tradition may have made sense at one point, I don't know, like a thousand years ago, in a 2023 context, Charles got memed. Hard. While this is an important tradition, the look on Charles's face was one of utter flummox. But hey, I'd totally be lost if I had to wear a robe that weighed 100 pounds and then lift some random gold. Look, I'm just trying to get on Charles's level here. Hopefully, Wills is taking notes of how not to turn into a meme. Yes, and once Charles put down that orb and scepter, it was off to the balcony. Charles appeared on Buckingham Palace's balcony following the coronation, where the rest of the royal family joined him. All of the royals waving to thousands of people who still love a monarchy. A monarchy who probably wouldn't want to be stuck in an elevator with one of those people, let alone attend a party dedicated to them. So we covered what King Charles was wearing, but let's get into the main course here. Princess garb! The Princess of Wales, aka Kate, was wearing a stunning white embroidered Alexander McQueen gown topped with royal blue and red ceremonial robes. Details of the long sleeve gown reveal shimmering silvery embroidery at the sleeves and at the hemline, which matches her floral, striking, shimmery headpiece. This color pairing is a nod, of course, to the colors of the Union Jack. 
And while Kate looked fly, it was, uh, pretty easy being a showstopper compared to the queen consort. Sorry, Camilla, but I'm strictly Team Diana. But seriously, is anyone Team Camilla? I need to know! Now, when it comes to the guest list at this very prestigious event, the male guests were expected to be in uniform or morning dress, while women were asked to wear evening or afternoon dresses with a veil. But this is 2023. One notable guest, Katy Perry, rocked a pink Stella McCartney suit with a big hat, which was definitely a choice due to all the viewers being able to spot her no problem when she struggled to find her seat. As for Prince Harry, he did not wear a military uniform, not wanting to follow the royal rules. How peculiar for Harold. JK, JK, JK. But we mustn't leave out Charles' looks. King Charles III ended up wearing the crimson velvet robe of the state, which was worn by King George VI at his coronation in 1937. And he looked great. As for the scowl on his face, he wore throughout most of the ceremony, mm, definitely vintage Charles. Hey, fun fact about this coronation, technically the royals weren't allowed to wear hats. But this did not stop the guests. Remember when Princess Eugenie and Princess Beatrice wore fascinators to Prince William's wedding that made them look like they were characters in Disney's Cinderella? Ah, we love a viral moment. So not to be too dismayed, tiaras and hats were in full display. That being said, Princess Kate did not opt for a tiara or hat. Instead, the Princess of Wales wore a gorgeous ivory flower headpiece made with sequins and metallic beading by Jess Collette and Alexander McQueen. It's believed that she and the rest of the senior royals opted for the more low-key look to match the atmosphere of the scaled-back ceremony. And of course, Charles had to wear St. Edward's crown, the official crown of the monarch, because nothing says scaled back like a designer made headpiece and a crown. And yes, we shan't forget what Camilla had on, because how could we possibly forget Camilla? The woman for which all mistresses must idolize. Raquel Levis, take note by the by. For Camilla was also wearing a crimson robe, this one originally made for Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. Underneath, she wore a tailored dress by British designer Bruce Oldfield. Would love to know if Queen Elizabeth was game for Camilla to wear her robe. Just saying. Never mind. Now, let's get down to the good stuff. We told you all the rules that guests and royals had to follow, but what about the rules that were broken? It was announced that peers may be allowed to wear lounge suits instead of ceremonial robes, and to mess up a quote said by Charles himself, Whatever in love means. So. <laughs> Get it? Like how he didn't understand what in love means? Anyways, other broken rules included Charles being presented with a bunch of gold bars, which, yeah, it's probably for the best for obvious reasons. And by obvious, we must reiterate, Britain is in economic despair. And finally, traditional velvet chairs were not used for guests. Oh geez, no gold bars or velvet chairs? How did they survive? Now that we're all royal experts in the world of coronations, which rule was one you would follow? Comment below, and for all things royalty gossip, be sure to like and subscribe to The Thing Celebrity.